Well, mark your calendars. Big news. The first Republican debate will be on August 23rd in Milwaukee, and the RNC has released the criteria for the debate. So what are the criteria and who is likely in and out of the debates? Let me break it all down for you. There are three main criteria. First, polling. Candidates must poll at least 1% in three national polls or 1% in two national polls and 1% in one of the early states, right? That's Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, or South Carolina. But here's one interesting caveat. They must meet this polling requirement no later than 48 hours prior to that first debate, August 23rd. But no polling can be conducted prior to July 1st, 2023. So they're gonna have between July 1st and August 23rd, almost two months to meet that criteria. The second one is fundraising. All of the campaigns must have a minimum of 40,000 unique donors to the candidate's campaign committee and 200 unique donors per state or territory in 20 states or territories, meaning you can't raise all your money from just one or two states. The last criteria is the candidate pledge. Candidates must have signed a pledge agreeing not to participate in any non-sanctioned RNC debate for the remainder of the election cycle. They must have signed a pledge agreeing to support the eventual party nominee and they must have signed the data sharing agreement with the RNC. I think the bottom line is, if you're gonna get on the stage, if you're gonna be a serious candidate, you need to show that you actually have support. The pledge though is what many people are already talking about. There has always been a pledge. It's always been tied to getting RNC data. Now you see every candidate wants access to the RNC data. It's a breakdown of every single voter, their history, their traits, et cetera, right? The RNC has spent tens of millions of dollars on this data. So it would be, in my opinion, political malpractice to give it to a candidate who, when they lose, say that they may run as an independent and run against all of the Republicans that they just sucked up the data for. Every candidate, by the way, signed it last cycle. I was actually at Trump Tower in 2015 when Trump signed that pledge. So let's run quickly through the announced candidates. Trump and DeSantis, I don't think either one of them will have an issue of making the debate stage, both in terms of donors or polling. They're both well in advance of that now. But I've said this before, I doubt Trump participates in the first debate. And I doubt he actually will do the second, but that's another discussion. Haley, Pence, Christie, and Tim Scott, they've all run statewide before they're all likely to make the cut as well. Vivek Ramaswamy, he's definitely making the polling threshold so far, and he's been spending a lot of time and money making sure that he gets low dollar donors to sign up. I think he'll be fine. For me, the three on the bubble, Asa Hutchinson, Burgum, and Elder, they're gonna be the ones that I think are interesting to watch, both in terms of polling and donors. It's early, they've got months to go. So while the criteria to make the debate stage, I think makes sense, the bigger concern that I have is who will be hosting these debates? Are we gonna have left-wing media outlets and moderators, or are we gonna have conservatives that understand our values and the issues that we care about? That's where I think the attention should be. Well, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure that you never miss another video.